Okay, so uh, what I was going to do for this particular video is take a look at what we call logarithmic differentiation. It's actually a strategy that is used when a problem does not expressly have a log in it, but a log turns into being a tool as opposed to part of the question. It's like actually just something we want to actually bring into the question to simplify the uh, kind of story that we're looking at. So um, yeah, let's just take a look at a couple. And so I wanted to do a, a couple of problems that I would argue are a little bit too easy for the kind of problem we're dealing with, but just to kind of demonstrate how that works. So the first one I thought we would look at is um, an extraordinarily simple problem like x cubed. Now, obviously we all know in here that the derivative of this y prime would be three x squared. It's sometimes okay to look at a brand new strategy through the lens of a very simple question so you can validate your process, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative, uh, uh, the log of both sides. I said derivative so often I start saying it even though I don't want to. Now, a property of logarithms says that anytime you have an exponent in a logarithm, it can become a coefficient. So that's what I'm going to start with is writing it this way. Now, the derivative, remember, that we talked about, the derivative of a log, the derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u times du dx. Now, keep in mind, chain rule still applies in here just like it does in all these other problems. So, if I were going to take the derivative of the natural log of y, I would get 1 over y dy dx. So, that's what we did right here, 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Remember, the 3 comes along for the right because it's a constant. And it's 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside, which, of course, is 1. So now if I wanted to get dy dx by itself, all I need to do is take this 3 over x that I have right there and multiply both sides by y. But looking back to the original problem, we know that y is x cubed right here. And so x goes into x cubed two times, so that would be 3x to the second. And so that was a much longer way to solve a fairly simple problem, but it validates our process. And that's what I thought I would do because I didn't think it was very hard to do that problem. So let's take a look at a problem that might actually be a little more problematic for people. Let's imagine that we had x squared plus 3, and we wanted to take the cube root of that, okay? Now, right off the bat, when we take that, we know that we have this idea of a chain rule. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is the kind of problem that this is the best to do, but we're just using it as a practicing technique, okay? So chain rule would say that if I have this whole thing to the one-third power, I should do this. I should remove one from the exponent put the original exponent in front, and then multiply by what's inside. So if we do this other problem correctly, we should get something that is either directly what I'm going to show you right here. Or at least equivalent to it. Now, again, I still think chain rule is better for a problem at this level of difficulty, but it works out okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So now if I took the natural log of both sides, what I get to do immediately is instead of thinking of this as a cube root, I'm thinking about it as a one-third power, which allows me to drop that in front. So I have 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Again, 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Now, if you look over here, you're going to see little remnants of what it is that we have, but it's not perfectly, perfectly clear. But the only thing left to do is to multiply both sides by y. So I've got 2x over 3. I've got x squared plus 3 in the bottom, and I'm going to multiply by y right here, which, again, I should put a y right there, but I don't want to write this too many times. So instead of putting a y right here, I'm going to choose to substitute in the original problem. And like I said, this is equivalent to the original problem because if this is uh, the Q root to the first power, um, this is to the one third power, of course, as you see right here, this is to the one power. And if you do that, you actually get the two thirds power. These are two 
different but equivalent statements, okay? So let's go ahead and get into a problem where logarithmic differentiation would in fact be very, very smart to do. So let's imagine someone came at us with this problem right here. I've got the square root of two x plus three. I wanna multiply that by uh, x minus four to the third power over um, 5x minus 7 squared. Now, this problem is actually very doable using a combination of chain rule with quotient rule with product rule. Um, the derivative, to be honest, would be highly unlikely to get right. I mean, we can do it. We really can. If we think of this as like an f times g over h, we could do that. Oh, my goodness. We'd have low d high. Let's see, minus high d low over the square of what's below. Okay, yes, we could do that. But I will say in context of this problem, there's an awful lot of stuff happening. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, no, I don't want to do all of that. We're going to go ahead and take the log of both sides. And it's specifically a natural log. Don't ever take a different log base. It's always natural. And then we're gonna go back to our days in math analysis. And keep in mind that when you have a product that is a sum of two separate logarithms. So keep in mind as we go through this problem, I'm gonna separate this as a bunch of individual little pieces. Not terribly difficult. Notice these two terms are being multiplied together. So there's an addition. This term right here is being divided, so it is a subtraction. And you'll notice that I held off for a second on that one part because another property of logarithm says that exponents become coefficients, which we did a lot last year. So there's a two on this one in front, a three on this one in front, and a one half in front on that one. Now again, we have not actually done any calculus yet, but now it's time to do some. So we have one over y times dy dx, because that's the derivative of any log. This one is one over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Now this two right here is from the one half. This two is from the chain rule. Then I have one over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside, but I still have the three that's in front. And then over here, I have one over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside, which would be five. So I'm gonna pick it at 10 because I had two of those fives. Now, again, that was not that terrible. The only problem is, is I now have dy dx is actually all of this stuff that we have already indicated over here. But all of this stuff right here, boop, 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 all of that, I need to multiply both sides by y, right? But of course, I don't really feel like rewriting that all the way over from scratch every single time when we do that. So what I'm gonna do is instead of multiplying that by y, I'm gonna multiply by what, by what y actually is. And, the general protocol on problems like this is just to smile and walk away. Now, could I distribute that and maybe clean it up a little bit? I could, but the reality is it's not going to be substantially better in the first place, so we're just going to call it a day. Now, the last little piece of this is that there is a style of problem that we would just not be able to do without this story, and that would be on my fourth problem right here. What if somebody comes at you with y equals x raised to the 2x power? Now, this is actually not a problem that we have the ability to do without logarithmic differentiation. Now, x to the 2x is kind of weird. If you graph it, it's crazy. Because remember, fractional exponents, because x could be a fraction, is roots. And so anytime x is, say, negative, I'm taking fractional roots of negative numbers, which will be undefined in places and defined in places. It's, it's pretty, pretty hairy. But let's see what happens. Let's take our log of those sides. Of course, always natural. That's going to allow this exponent to pop in front. This is now turned into a simple product rule question. 
Now, just as we keep doing, the derivative of the left side in logarithmic differentiation is always one over y times y prime or dy dx. And now here we go. Here is f prime g plus g prime f. So that didn't look too bad. Of course, we could simplify it ever so slightly. That's two ln of x, and this is actually reduces down to simply the number two. This is actually normally what I would consider a very scary problem in a calculus class, but with logarithmic differentiation, it becomes quite benign because I'm gonna multiply both sides by y, but keep in mind y if I put it right here, if I multiply both sides by that y, that y is x to the 2x power, and we're done. We have done the derivative, and we use logs as a tool to make our life easier. So I will see you back in class. Hopefully that's helpful. I'll see you later.